My older brother and his wife are expecting their first child in the coming weeks, and my parents threw them a little baby shower. In this video, I share how I helped out with the desserts and the decorations, so let's get to it. If you are new here, my name is Emily. Welcome to my little channel. In a previous video, I shared that my brother and his wife were expecting their first child and even shared their adorable gender reveal, which I made cupcakes for. Feel free to check out that video after this one. I will link it above. For their baby shower, I offered to make two desserts, the first being chocolate dip pretzels, and of course, I added my own little twist. To make these, I pretty much just picked up some melting chocolates from Winco. We had some Snyder's little square pretzels, and I had some food coloring to add some pink to them since my brother and his wife are expecting a little girl. I melted the chocolate in 30 second intervals until it was nice and smooth, and then just dipped three of the four corners of the little square pretzels into the chocolate and set them on parchment paper to firm up. Once this first little batch was dipped and set, I decided to dye the remaining white melting chocolate pink so that I could drizzle it on to add a little cute additional effect. Then once all of these guys were set, I transferred them to a little container and continued dipping pretzels. I went ahead and dipped the next little batch into the pink melting chocolate. And once that was all set, I decided to drizzle some white melting chocolate over this one. Then the idea came to me that I could make these little like baby blocks that usually people make out of just foam board or something from the Dollar Tree, but make them with the pretzels. So I decided to dip the entire square pretzel into the white melting chocolate and let them firm up. And then I assembled these little cubes using six little squares by dipping the edges into chocolate and just kind of securing the pieces together with the melting chocolate, kind of filling in extra chocolate as needed. And then once the square was set, I took some pink melting chocolate that I colored with my food coloring and piped on little square borders around the pretzels and then the letters B-A-B-Y, B's on like all of the sides of one of the cubes, A's on all of the sides of one cube and so on, so that you could place the cubes however you wanted and it would still say baby. I'm actually really proud of this idea because it was kind of just one that came to me and I wasn't inspired by something I saw online or anything like that. So I think it turned out really cute. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. The other dessert I made were little hand pies. I actually shared this recipe over a year ago on my channel, but I thought it was time to share it again since I've had a lot of new subscribers here. We picked up two packages of pie crust, but you can just use one package. It comes with two individual circles of pie crust in the package, and in the previous video that I shared, I think I got about 13 hand pies out of one pack. So we wanted a little bit more than that for this party, and so that's why we have three packs here. You will also need some canned pie filling, unless you wanna make your own from scratch, some powdered sugar, some milk, additional flour, egg for an egg wash and if you want to spice up your apple pie filling or your peach pie filling or whatever you choose you could add some cinnamon or maybe adjust it in some way 
that's actually what I went ahead and I added in a little bit of extra cinnamon to this cinnamon apple pie filling because I could just kind of felt like it needed it. After preparing the pie filling, I went ahead and got my dough to room temperature, prepared my little surface with a sprinkle of flour and laid my pie crust out. I also rolled out my dough just a little bit to try to get maybe one more extra hand pie out of this package and used a bowl that we had on hand to cut out perfect circles. You could make these as large or as small as you want. This bowl that I used was probably at least four or five inches in diameter. Uh, if you have a biscuit cutter, that could work. It really just depends on the size preference that you have. After rolling out my scraps and creating one more hand pie using them, I took a nice little cookie scoop size of my pie filling and put it in the centers of each of my pie dough circles and used a little bit of water to put around the circumference of the pie dough and pinched these guys together. I tried my best to do some like folded crimping thing on my first batch and I'm not too proud of how it looked. So I just went ahead and sealed the edges with a fork just to make sure that they were nice and sealed. I did perfect the twisting crimping method later on and I will show you how to do it so you can get better looking hand pies if that is what you're going for. Then I poked some holes in the shape of an S on some of these guys just to let the heat escape. Although it really doesn't matter what shape you choose because it will eventually be filled in by the frosting. So just keep that in mind. And I finished it off with an egg white wash. I ended up switching these two steps later on because I felt like the egg wash would fill in the holes and they'd probably make the little hand pies burst, which is the whole point of the holes you know, is to avoid that. So uh, I ended up doing the egg wash first and then poking the holes for the next batch of hand pies. I am choosing to save the yolk here and we're gonna go ahead and freeze this so that we can use it when we're making bread that just calls for egg yolks in the future. So these actually are fine. If you put them in the freezer, they last for a while. And then when you need them, you just take them out and let them defrost and you're good to go. So then I just put these guys in the oven at about 425 degrees based on what the package of the pie dough said. And here I'll show you guys how to better crimp your little hand pies if you want them to look a little bit nicer. I think the best way that I can describe this is that you're gonna pinch the dough every time you fold it over and you're gonna pull a little bit of the dough on the bottom out with your index finger to create the dough that you will push over for your next little twist, if that makes sense. <laughs> Originally, when I was doing this, I really wasn't trying to create some additional dough. And so it was just kind of folding it on itself and kind of invading the pie filled area instead of going around the circumference. So when, like I said, when you fold over the dough and want to kind of crimp it or pinch it into the pie dough, you want to press down with your thumb and pull your index finger closer to the palm of your hand, pulling out some of that dough so that now you have something else to fold over, but it won't fold into uh, the part of your pie that is already filled with filling. One thing that you do want to be aware of is not to make the dough too thin because as you're pulling with your index finger, if your dough is too thin, it might rip the dough on the back side of your little hand pie and then create a huge hole where the pie filling will escape from. So having a thicker dough uh, when you guys are making these could be a good thing because you won't actually have 
tearage of the dough <laughs> um, when you guys are constructing this. If you aren't you doing the crimping method, if you are doing the crimping method, you probably will be fine if your dough is a little bit thinner. So anyways, once your guys' hand pies are out of the oven, you can see some of mine exploded a little bit, but it's fine. They were covered in nice frosting, so it's all good. I mixed some milk with powdered sugar, and I'll put the measurements down below in the description box to create a nice little icing. And we're gonna just kind of paint this on to the hand pies. And I did about two, maybe three coats per hand pie and it, they turned out great. So this next little decoration was actually inspired by my sister-in-law's shirt on a family vacation. I don't even remember seeing if they were baby bottles on her shirt or if it was like her wedding shirt that said poppin' bottles, but I just thought it would make for a funny little decoration to put by our drink station. Then I moved on to blowing up what seemed like a million balloons. Luckily, we have invested in this little electric air balloon pump, which has been a lifesaver. I wish I had it for Aubrey's birthday when we were blowing up a ton of balloons. So this is a lifesaver I highly recommend. Aubrey was enjoying the balloons as I was blowing them up, acting weird as normal for her. Uh, so enjoy this little clip. And then I ended up buying one of these balloon art strips from the Dollar Tree. I don't know, I'm sure they sell them on Amazon and they're probably a lot more expensive than just a dollar. So uh, the balloons also I got from the Dollar Tree. It comes in this little wrapped package and it's very long. I actually didn't even end up using the entire length. And you pretty much insert the balloon ties into the little holes and secure them that way. And every once in a while I had to skip a hole just because the balloons maybe were slightly too large. I tried to do a variety of sizes to avoid having to skip spaces. But then once my little arch was assembled with some extra balloons off to the side in case they popped because I did this the night before, I moved on to a little streamer decoration that I made with some jute twine and two rectangular tablecloths from the Dollar Tree. And I say tablecloths, but they're really plastic table covers. Pretty much what I did was I took the entire thing out of the package, didn't touch it and open it up, and cut horizontal strips. And each time you cut, you get about four long strips of the plastic table cover. And so once I was done cutting up the table cover, I went ahead and looped these guys onto a little string and I did them in groups of two. So I probably could have had it be less thick and a little bit more full if I just did one strip at a time. But here's what it looked like with the two table covers on there and I kind of spaced them out because I had a pack of white streamers left over from our parents 40th surprise party and I added those on and it gave it just like a different texture and I don't know I kind of I liked how it wasn't just the same texture all the way through. So that wrapped up my evening. I was kind of exhausted and feeling very tired so I decided to go to bed 
And the next morning, Juan helped me by setting this up. We attached the jute twine to two of our trees in the backyard and then assembled the little balloon arch and tied it onto the string as well, kind of creating this little pink and white rainbow thing <laughs> that was going to be used for pictures later on. My mom did an awesome job with the food. She had zucchini bread and pumpkin bread. I think I've shared those recipes before on my channel, so if you want to know how to make those, you can check out my videos. I tied some of my extra balloons up in the backyard, and I really like how this added to our little setup. I will definitely be using that little technique again. The pretzels ended up being a hit. My mom made some like cheesy hash brown bites, which were delicious. And these like cauliflower cheesy Canadian bacon bites, which it was the first time she made this and I honestly love them. I could keep eating them. So it's a recipe that I will share in the future when we make it again. We had some egg puffs and it was just a really pleasant day. And I'm just so excited to meet my newest little niece and support my brother and his wife as they welcome this new little blessing into their lives. I'd like to thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed my little ideas and creativity throughout this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you are new here, I would love it if you stuck around and subscribed to my channel. And I'll catch you in the next one. to the end of the video. If you didn't know already, every Monday and Friday you can find motherhood and lifestyle content on this channel. And since us moms have to do it all, that may mean yummy recipes, easy DIYs, mom hacks, cleaning and organization, or just a combo of everything. Please know that you are loved and you are made for greatness, and I will catch you in the next one.